During the Millimonti event, a Might Motors Mark I, produced by our imperialistic neighbors in the north, crashed on the descent from the Monte Fusco mountain pass, killing driver and co-driver on the spot. There are speculations about the reasons for the crash, with the most likely options being brake fade or driver exhaustion. The Fruinian Ministry of Transport has announced an investigation of the accident. Shortly thereafter, a letter arrived at the Cesalpina headquarters. It said, Dear Mr. Antonelli, as an amendment to the existing homologation prerequisites, the minimum safety requirements for road cars will be adjusted with immediate effect. Enclosed you find the technical details. Please respond without delay and send drawings about how your company ensures the roadworthiness of your products. Until proof of conformity, no more registrations of vehicles will be possible. Best regards and screw you, blah blah. Lorenzo obviously is furious. How can the government implement such a drastic change in such a short time frame with no time to react? Why do they hurt their own industry if a foreign car manufacturer is incapable of building proper cars with an overall weight matching their braking power? There are rumors that the Ministry of Transport just waited for a reason to implement protection against foreign imports. By having the harshest safety requirements, hopes are high that the local industry is strengthened. But why must this happen in such a short time frame? This is causing more harm than benefits, and the Fruinian manufacturers have no advantages over others, as everybody must or has the chance to react now. Of course, Cisalpina has no proof of the safety of their cars and indeed the cars are very fragile. Lorenzo also believes it's much safer to be thrown outside of your burning wreckage after your crash than being tied with a belt right to it. The Rivetto platform is impossible to be adapted to the new harsh requirements quickly enough. This change in the homologation requirements is completely destroying the business in Fruinia. And together with that a major pillar of the company's success. So which actions will we take? Let's find out! Hello and welcome back to our wonderful automation campaign with Cesalpina. First of all, I like change. Change keeps things interesting and gives idea for new lore. Of course I was shocked first when I tried the new game update, even though the devs warned me about the upcoming rebalance of the safety requirements. I somewhat had planned the next steps already, but I actually like the new challenge in front of us. So let's see what we can do. It is looking bad, very bad. The Rivetto cannot be sold anymore at all in Fuinia. This means we will lose the major part of our sales. Let's take a look. So here's our overall sales. And this is how it would look like after Fuinia falls away. Eight cars. Before and after. What remains is the lure. So which actions do we take? The Rivetto will no longer be sold in Fuinia. Therefore all marketing activities will be cancelled. R&D activities will be cancelled. Just the project testing new tire technology for Spirelli will be continued. We will concentrate on the Lua with targeted marketing activities and ship the rest of our fragile Rivettos there. We need to check the market situation there and adjust our offering accordingly. Let's hope the other Fruinian companies working with Gisalpina will be able to survive as well with exports to the Lua. We'll be able to survive as well with exports to the Lua, like the one shown here, a more luxurious version of the Rivetto created by a community member OME. Thanks for the nice contribution. For the future, we will develop a new, safe car from the ground up. This must happen as quickly as possible. So maybe, again, it will not be the most refined car. But we must do our best with our limited budget and significantly less revenue. So let's get to work. Marketing. We have to cancel our marketing in Fuenia. And we do that completely to also show our disrespect with the decision and the government. For the lure, we also need to save money. Currently we are spending around 65,000 and we need to cut a few expenses. So we are back to around 10k. We saved 50k here, but of course it severely hit our marketing capabilities in the Lua. So from 152k we are back to 10k. And now let's further try to reduce our spending because this green line will drop all the way to around 250,000. So let's X. Our R&D activities. Top end, we just started, but we need to stop with our developments there. Chassis as well, aerodynamics as well. I want to keep the wheel research and I put it to plus two because we almost reached level two and I want to hold that to have access to the wheels very very soon. Apparently they should be available within one month and that's when we start our new car. And then let's check our market in the Lua. 
we see that there is no track market and we sell exactly one convertible sport and I'm not sure if that's the Roadster version, the Competizione or if it's the closed top version. Most of our sales are definitely the Millimonti versions but we can check in more detail. Yeah, here it says in the convertible sport category the Rivetto is just one car and it's the Millimonti and not the Competizione. That means the Competizione is not sold at all in Dalua so we will exit from our lineup and we do that by pausing production. We still have 13 cars in stock, unfortunately. And then the Millimonti version, um, let's check our pricing. So we're currently selling in Lightspot Premium and Sport. 20k should be a good price. So let's reduce it. And I will also reduce the price of the Competizione just to see if we can sell it without a loss. And then to further reduce our production, let's reduce our shifts again. So we have to throw out a few of our workers. I will go with the minimum amount of production for now. And this should have us prepared for what's coming. So now let's wait until we have new tires and then we uh, will design the replacement car. All right, and this is where we stand, 10 cars and a loss of 170k. There is not much we can do against it, so we have to hope that the sales in the Lua are picking up at some point and that we can survive. We have 2 million in the banks. I will start a new project. I will probably take out more than 100% of a loan in order to survive. And yeah, let's try. Let's go. The problem also is that we don't have a car body available, which I really like. A coupe and up to date. So I have to go back in time and even go to 1943 for a car body, which almost made it to be the Rivetto and use this one. The body itself looks like an evolution from the original very simple Rivetto shape. So I'm fine with how it looks, but the old body penalty might hurt. And that means this car will be only an interim solution until there is a nicer body available and then we will create a new model very soon. So this will be it, the 2.1 meter version, we go as small as possible. Anything above two meters I think is fine, 2.1 is fine. The other one would be 2.24, which is a little too much for now. Again, and I know it's not optimal, I start with the ladder frame because it must be very quick. I need to get this to the market within two years. So space frame takes more time and I will not go for it. We will switch to space frame maybe for the next car. All of the solutions here are basically what the Rivetto already was. I don't invest into a different technology here because it needs to be quick. We need to do what we can do. For the engine, um, we are currently working on a V8 engine, but I think it is not there yet. Um, it is low reliability. It's a racing prototype. I think we need to go with the 1.1 liter version we currently have and update this one. We might even, if it's too expensive, stick with what we have. There is definitely not much more I can get out of this. And I don't think a facelift is worth it for one and a half horsepower. So I will not choose the replacement of this engine. So I have just selected very basic options again um, to work on the body, to work on the design, um, to have the right wheels on there, or somewhat reasonable wheels. Let's get started. Right, as our color of protest, we choose yellow, so no longer the cars will be running in red, but choose the Daluan, but choose the Daluan colors for this car's presentation. Now with the basics done, 
let's try what we can do with the shape of this car. Alright, this is roughly it. And now let's try to give this a new face. All right, the front is somewhat done. I added bumper bars for more safety, obviously. And the rest is there. The old grill, or at least something very similar to it. Headlight and an indicator. Maybe a bit more detailing would still help. So let's add something for brake ventilation. All right. Yeah, I probably should have moved that whole assembly up a bit, but I won't shift it over now. Number plate sitting a bit low, but let's keep it that way. Alright, this is the very basics done. It's time to consider a bit more venting, mostly on the bonnet. And therefore I already have a very good idea. In the first episode I said I don't know the perfect vent for this. And I found a solution. It's more complex, but I found a solution that I like. And this solution consists of body molding and cutout fixture. It certainly isn't perfect, but I like it a lot more. Maybe let's reduce the depth. Alright, it's time to consider the dashboard and interior. So with the interior I also got some seat belts now because that's what um, the advanced 50s package says. 
So fronted rear passengers are provided with lap seat belts. And it also says roof pillars are somewhat strengthened for rollover protection. So we probably also add a roll bar of some sort. Regarding safety, I guess we need the advanced 50. So here we are only at 14.1 for the roadster. So definitely we need to add a bit more safety with quality to get to the 15 that we need. Probably two quality. So definitely it is advanced 50s that we need here. Right, I'm pretty much happy with where I am. I mean, it's nothing too special and something very quick. But I need to add a few more rivets. Our manufacturing capability has improved, but I want to do a little bit. Alright, I guess this is it. The car's name is the Montone, which means in English the Ram, because Lorenzo wants to have his own mind and push through no matter what. So let's now try to make this into a proper car. Gearbox is basic, 4 speed, manual, pretty standard. First gear can probably be a bit shorter. Yeah, this is looking good. Tires, we want to do sports compound, not too wide, quite small tires to stay lightweight, brakes a bit more sporty, balance them, good, a bit of aero quality, make it faster, again detachable soft top for this one. Although the manual one would be so much better. And ah yeah, mostly because it's more it's heavier and then it meets the safety standards. That is the issue. Yes. So with uh, no entertainment, this one would fail again. Let's add a bit of quality. And then we're definitely well above 15. And again, we have a decent track car. I guess I need to go for entertainment here, um, because then we open up the sports convertible and, and convertible supercar markets when they get online. And I think we're just better off. Car wants to be a bit more understeery. I was just interested in um, where we would end up with regards to emissions and it's West zero probably because of very high um, carbon monoxide but we still have more than 10 years to go so I don't I don't really bother about emissions In general I think this car is pretty good so let's add the close top version called the Millimonti
All right, this one needs windshield wipers again and mirrors. All right, let's check it out. Overall, a better car probably. And definitely is our Light Sports Premium version. And it's also a lot safer, so we can save the quality here, make it cheaper. And of course, I forgot the roll bar. And it's actually not that easy now with this cover here, but I'll try to make something out of it. All right, basic roll bar is done. And we're ready to go. Ouch, 66 months needs to be brought down to 24 or better 23. And the big contribution is safety. Who would have expected that? Let's see what we can do. Also the cost 18 million, yeah, for sure. Okay, really dirty prototype. So for 29 months, two and a half years basically, so we will be half a year late on our tire integration, but I can live with that. And we have a much better margin. Could even go for a lot more automation, but I cannot afford it. And also the reliability is so bad. But I need to get a car to Fuinia. 29 months it is. I'm investing a bit more into my workers just to raise our build quality. I think that's necessary. Overall, the factory is fine. Just to raise the QA threshold a bit and a few more issues. Forecast is all right, not the best, but let's try. 25% again, same prices, margins are a lot worse because the car is not optimized, but it's, as I said, it's just transition and um, maybe we can optimize it a bit more with the facelift. At least um, they say the project will be good and profitable, so let's choose a bit of loan. Pay back 150k per month. Four years, 30% extra. This should get us through the current crisis. And it's signed off. So let's head on to the track and see how it does. I don't expect anything special because it's heavier, has the same power. Maybe the new tires help a bit. And off we go. Obviously the acceleration is not that good as the car has the same engine as the 1100cc Rivetto but is much heavier, about 100 kilograms. So on the first meter it doesn't feel like an improvement. But once we hit the corners it definitely feels like an improvement. Damn, these sports tires help to make the car feel planted through the corners. And I have the feeling that we can carry so much more speed through the corners.
So we are still testing here on the Millimonti stage, even though we have, of course, stopped all of our marketing and racing activities in Florida for now. But we cannot go to Dalua just to test our cars, so we have to test right in front of our doorstep. And this is the Millimonti, this is the hills and mountains of Ruinia. And of course, also Lorenzo wants to compare the cars and have an equal measure for all of the different generations. So yeah, this yellow little car is a lot of fun and I have the feeling that the 1100cc engine is just right for this one. But in the following years we will integrate the new V8 which has twice the horsepower. So this might be a bit more tricky then. Here with this four-cylinder engine it really is easy to drive. You don't feel these 100 kilograms extra just during acceleration, but the tires are so much better. I was scared that this car might be slower than the Rivetto, just because of 20% more weight, but the tires helped, the cornering helped on such a twisty road. and we have an improvement of around 20 seconds. So now let's head on to 1953 and hopefully survive until then so that we can finally integrate the V8 into the Montone. So what's happening? Sales are picking up slightly. 10 cars per month, still making a hefty deficit. But at least the taxman won't get anything, right? Company valuation is down the drain. The engineering is very expensive. So currently we're engineering both engine and new car. That's why the loan is not completely covering um, our engineering cost. I was confident that we can afford the engine. Yeah, looks like we cannot. But let's hope we can survive. We have about eight more months in there with the money we have in the bank and I hope at some point we will get a few pre-orders. In addition to that, uh, we already have many vehicles in stock around 16 months. That means we can finally send our workers onto a strike. So let's really protest against the government and pause the production here. Let's see if it helps. Oh, yeah, we make a, prof a profit. Nobody's working. We don't need any materials anymore because we don't need to buy expensive engines anymore. So I guess we will survive, even though the company valuation is further decreasing. And now the pre-orders are really kicking in. We have way more pre-orders than current sales. I think we made it through the roughest patch so far. Eight more months and I think we need to produce for one more month. So let's do that right now before I forget and stop immediately thereafter. Our engine is ready. No taxes, probably because our company valuation is negative. And we're making a huge profit now with all of the pre-orders. Yeah, definitely have enough cars in stock of the Rivetto. Huge profits. I want to get a bit of a cushion for the next project we are starting very soon. All right, the Montone is ready. Let's 
let it regulate the factory shifts on its own. And let's just see how many cars we sell. That's quite decent. I hoped for a bit more profit, but we are already repaying some loan. So actually we are making a profit of more than half a million a month. And it's not like we are completely overproducing. So I think we can turn this ship around. Let's see where we sell. We are selling around about 12 cars or 11 cars into the lure. So it hasn't really improved a lot. And our reputation there is pretty bad. Um, what about Fruinia? Um, there we are now fully into the light sports market again. So they like our very safe cars. And it's time that we improve our cars a bit more. But that will have to happen in next episode. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of the Montone and how you would have handled the crisis. I'm already looking forward to making this into a proper car and I hope to see you all again soon. Thanks for watching and bye bye.